Good afternoon. At this moment, let us all be present in mind, body, and spirit. Let us join together as a community, a community of family and friends. As we recognize the young men before us, let us take this time to quiet our minds and our spirits. Let us together recognize the lives we have lived. As we celebrate today, let us remember those in our lives that have helped us on our journey. Some are here today and others are not. Sadly, one of our own, one of our Cardigan family, is not here today. I would ask that we pause for a moment of silence to recognize the passing of our dear friend, Mr. Dudley Clark. It is beautiful, momentous days like today that allow us to pause, reflect, and celebrate. Mr. Clark and many others lived for these moments. Let us celebrate today, recognizing the accomplishments of these graduates. As Mr. Clark and others not present with us today would have wanted. Let us be the community that these individuals saw and fostered the community that we are today. A community from different walks of life, different countries, different cultures and backgrounds, and different beliefs. Let us still ourselves to unite together in celebration of these young men. It is at this time that I ask you to join in prayer or in silent reflection. Let the spirits of all faiths be present with us, let them allow us to be present in this special moment and grace us with the opportunity to fill our hearts with joy, gratitude, and pride for the young men we recognize today. May our minds, bodies, and spirits be present in the now on this milestone of life's journey. Let us be together as a community, as family, as friend. Let us unite together as one spirit, so that we may show our gratitude for our lives' opportunities and for the opportunity to celebrate today. As the spirits fill our hearts with love, joy, and celebration, let these feelings radiate out into this community and beyond its forest-lined borders. As a cardigan journey of these gentlemen comes to a close, let them be blessed to see the opportunities of the road ahead. Let them go out knowing they have the skills, the values, and the courage to take on life's challenges. As we begin this moment in eternity, let us give thanks for the life we have, the friends we have made, the challenges we have overcome, and the spirit we have grown and, will which, and which will endure. May the spirits of all faiths, the Almighty, see fit to bless us and bless this day so that we may freely celebrate. May we seek to use the inner light and love and joy to help usher these young men into their new journey. We give thanks to the spirits for this day and the blessings we have. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome, one and all, to Cardigan's Mountain Schools 72nd Commencement Exercises. As usual, it is a beautiful day in New Hampshire. I know that folks have traveled from near and far, from just down the road to all corners of the globe to be with us here today. Parents, grandparents, and siblings of our graduates, alumni, trustees, and so many more friends of Cardigan. We are honored by your presence here today. I'm also honored to extend a special welcome to Beverly Wakeley, uh, who is here with her daughter Mary for commencement. Bev and her husband Norm Wakeley led Cardigan from 1963 until 1989, and in many ways formed the bedrock upon which our school stands. Glad to have you here, Beverly. <laughs> to 
To the young men of the class of 2018, I offer my heartfelt and sincere congratulations and thanks. As you have heard from the faculty and from your Cardigan brothers in the many ceremonies leading up to this day, your example of honest and thoughtful leadership and your clear commitment to making Cardigan a better school has been noticed and appreciated by all. The growth that you have attained at Cardigan is multifaceted. You have blossomed academically and intellectually. You've learned how to better manage your time, organize yourselves and your work, and achieve your best in classes. You've also learned the value of curiosity and inventiveness. Watch the latter two work for you in the years to come. You have physically developed into sturdy young men whom opponents fear because of your athletic skills and teamwork and respect because of your sportsmanship. You've developed your aesthetic muscles as well by painting, acting, singing, and playing before an appreciative community of patrons. Through chapel, community service, and residential life programming, you have demonstrated a concern for the infinite and a care for the finite. Your daily celebration and allegiance to our core values of compassion, integrity, respect, and courage have made our school a more harmonious home for your younger Cardigan brothers who have benefited from your kindness and goodwill. No path through Cardigan is quite the same, and few are linear. There is no one way to grow and succeed here. Indeed, it may well be that genuine success at Cardigan is the reflected and acted upon residue of somewhat smaller failures. That is how we all grow. That is how you succeed here on the point, and how you will succeed anywhere your paths take you from here. For some, it takes time to realize and fully appreciate the significance of your experience at Cardigan. You may never again live in a community in which so many know and love you for who you are, warts and all, as much as we have here on The Point. In a little over an hour, many of you will have tears in your eyes as you embrace each other for the last time. Your parents might be shedding some too. Let them flow, boys. Let them flow. That lump in your throat is your heart telling you that something profound has occurred, and you'd be wise to listen to it. Your parents' emotion, I can assure you, will come from a wellspring of pride and love, the depths of which cannot be possibly plumbed. Give each other a big hug and enjoy this moment. As you say your goodbyes today, be sure to seek out the adults in this community who have impacted you. Thank the faculty for their excellence, for they are truly a remarkable group of people, and you are fortunate to have worked and played with them. Don't be afraid, and don't be embarrassed. They will love you for it, and you will make their day. Take time to connect with your younger Cardigan brothers once more before you leave. You've inspired them and they will miss you. Of course, also be sure to take a moment to some point today to thank your parents and families for giving you the gift of this extraordinary experience that is Cardigan Mountain School. They will love you for it too, and I have a feeling you've already made their day. This year, I have marveled at the enterprise of so many of you with such disparate ambitions. The engine behind it all, the school, our school, which by sublime alchemy yoked all to all and produced a whole greater than its parts, whose essence was neither A's nor wins, nor perfect pitch, nor artistic brilliance, though all these brought forth, it brought forth in abundance, but some quality of spirit intangible, whose essence was audacity, intrepidity, and enterprise. Our year has been made up of countless moments, the personal quiet moments, and the public noisy ones. You'll take them all with you when you leave today, but they will all also remain here. They will always be here, waiting for you to return. Boys, when you cross this stage and become Cardigan alumni, you'll be joining a brotherhood that has been growing for 72 years. Your brothers, both past and present, are here with you now. They've been here all along and they will be with you forever. Congratulations to this remarkable group of young men, the great class of 2018.
I now have the distinct privilege to introduce the chair of Cardigan's Board of Trustees, and as of about an hour ago, Cardigan's most recent alumnus, Mr. Hank Holland. Mr. Holland has served on the Cardigan Board since 2010. Hank is the father of Hayden, who graduated from Cardigan in 2012, Corbin, who graduated in 2015, and their younger brother, Fulton. In any headmaster's life and work, the relationship between the head and the board chair must be a special one. Despite living a continent away in California and busy with his successful career and family, Hank is a regular visitor here on The Point. While many know Hank for what I call his action gear, I've also found Hank Holland to be a patient listener, empathic and wise counselor, and unflinching supporter of Cardigan Mountain School. While Hank will be remaining on, the Cardigan, on Cardigan's board of directors, he will be rotating off of the chair after this year. I'd like to take this moment to publicly thank Mr. Holland for all that he has done for Cardigan, and it is with great respect and gratitude that I introduce my boss and my mentor, Mr. Hank Holland. Good morning. As chairman of Cardigan's board of trustees, I have the privilege and the pleasure of sharing this exciting and milestone day with our Cardigan boys and their families. Before I share my brief reflection, I'd like to take a moment for a couple of acknowledgments. The first is directed at our graduating boys. Would each of you please rise? You're an amazing group of young men. I'm proud of you. I hope that you will reflect on your Cardigan experience and feel that we, the Cardigan community, stay true to our promise. The promise to get to know each of you and to love each of you. Though today you will give teary-eyed hugs and say goodbyes, you may not fully appreciate your life and experience on the point for many years. For each of us is indebted to the tireless efforts of our faculty, coaches, and administration. However, without your parents, and your family's support, this experience would not have been possible. Your parents feel a love for you that is unwavering, and today they take pride in all that you've accomplished. Would you please turn towards your parents and recognize their selfless commitment and their many sacrifices. <laughs> Second, I'm mindful that we gather during Memorial Day weekend. We pause and reflect on the sacrifices of our veterans and their families, and in particular, those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. There are many founding ideals and precepts, but none was more central to the birth of a new nation than the idea that we would be free to experience life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'd like to expand on the pursuit, the pursuit of happiness. For I believe that the Cardigan experience our boys' life on the point has established a foundational roadmap for the successful pursuit of happiness. As you reflect on your time at Cardigan, I hope that you will connect the rich and busy daily life on the point with your pursuit of happiness. Please remember these things. Accomplish something every day. At Cardigan, we've asked you to make your bed each morning. We've given you daily tasks and responsibilities. In my case, upon awakening, I start each day with a prayer. I make my bed. Commit to yourself to perform one habit, one act of ritual every day. Learn something every day. I hope that you've learned things at Cardigan, that you leave prepared to be successful at your next school. But more importantly, I hope that Cardigan has fostered and instilled a love of learning, and intellectual curiosity. Never stop asking questions, inquire, challenge, read, listen, observe, experience. Commit to a lifetime of learning and new experiences. Practice an act of service every day. Look around, be observant. This is the common characteristic of all happy and contented people. This is a big deal. This is the secret to the pursuit of happiness. And let me expand. At Cardigan, Coach Marion touched the lives of thousands of boys over his decades on campus. 
Though we had a quiet presence, Coach Marion was quick to pick up the spirits of a discouraged boy. He always seemed to be there with a reassuring handshake, a glance across the room, or a kind word. And his favorite words live on as his legacy helped the other fella. For me, I attended Jesuit, a boys' high school in Dallas, Texas. It was an incredible and formative experience. Much like Cardigan, there was an intentional focus on educating the whole boy, the mind, the body, and the spirit. The school's motto is men for others. Integrated in our senior year curriculum was taking one day each week away from classes to go off campus and engage in community service. In my case, I was fortunate to volunteer and teach each week at inner city school. These acts may seem altruistic, but for me, they're selfish acts. I've learned that I feel better and I'm happier when I practice these acts of service. To this point, one of my heroes, Viktor Frankl, developed an entire field of psychology. Frankl had the unimaginable experience of being a Holocaust survivor. He went on to write one of the most important books in the 20th century, Man's Search for Meaning, which I highly recommend for everyone. Frankl's seminal belief was that man spends his life in search for purpose, in search for meaning, and that happiness is the byproduct of living a purposeful life, of finding meaning in one's life. My final reference is to one of our own, Mr. Wim Hart. For over 40 years, Mr. Hart has taught, coached, and mentored Cardigan Boys. Amazingly selfless pursuit, and we thank you. A final pursuit. Boys, aspire to be a good man, a gentle man. Most important, aspire to be trusted. For our word is what bonds us to our fellow man. Walk through life gently with a grateful heart. We never know the silent struggles of another. If you want to change the world, express your humble and grateful heart every day. Practice acts and words of kindness. That's it. As you set off on life's next chapter, continue to practice these things. Accomplish something every day. Learn something every day. Give service to others every day and aspire to be a good, trusting, and gentle man. If these pursuits become the essence of your character, your life will be well lived, and you will know happiness. Cardigan class of 2018, congratulations. You're an amazing group of young men. It's your turn to leave the point. I end with the words that are often credited to Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did do. So throw off your bow lines, sail away from safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holland, for those uh, remarkable remarks. And now I have the honor of awarding commencement prizes. I feel like we should all maybe do some jumping jacks first to loosen, warm up a little time. And Mr. Doherty will help me. The Hinman Prize is given annually in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Harold P. Hinman to the senior who, in the opinion of the faculty, by industrious application of his studies, through his attitude on the playing field and by his behavior and integrity, most nearly approaches the ideals of manhood as conceived in the minds of the founders of Cardigan Mountain School. The 2018 Hinman Prize is awarded to Peter Fox Smith Gilbert. The Caldwell Prize is awarded to the senior who has shown outstanding athletic achievement and sportsmanship. The 2018 Caldwell Prize is awarded to Malcolm Alexander Gregory Bussey. The 
Faculty Prize. This student demonstrates a unique combination of steadfastness, creativity, and leadership in his life on the point. In the classroom, he shows his keen eye for pattern and balance through his many visual projects. Outside the classroom, his creativity and hard work enliven the living lab as part of the new mural there. He is a caring, kind, and consistent leader who aids those around him to live up to Cardigan's core values while courageously working to stretch his own comfort level. His steadfast, steadfastness is seen in the tireless hours he spends rallying and organizing our student body to clean dishes morning, noon, and night. His quiet demeanor often masks his attributes, but his work does not go unnoticed. For his determination and earnestness in all aspects of Cardigan life, the faculty is proud to present this faculty award to Marcus Chan. The Dewar Prize is awarded annually in honor of Dr. and Mrs. Cameron K. Dewar to the member of the senior class with the highest academic standing. The 2018 Dewar Prize is awarded to Alan So. The Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize is awarded by the class of 1989 to the senior who, in the opinion of his classmates, best upholds the tradition, spirit, and pride of Cardigan Mountain School, thus making every day a beautiful day in New Hampshire. The 2018 Norman and Beverly Wakeley Prize is awarded to Jersheng Jason Lee. faculty prize. This young man embodies the very spirit of Cardigan. From the day he stepped foot on campus, he was all in. Ready to live our core values, he excelled in the classroom, dorm, and in the locker room. An instinctive yet subtle leader, doing the right thing comes naturally to him. He is self-aware and holds a high regard for his own integrity. Always striving to be his best, Magnus does what he feels is the right thing no matter what the circumstances. For this reason, he has earned the respect of his peers and faculty alike. This faculty prize goes to Magnus Burley Godowski. The Founders Prize is awarded to the senior who has the will, uh, who has the will to complete any project, regardless of the difficulties encountered, without thought of personal gain, and whose objective is a job well done. In the same approach that characterized the life of Harold P. Hinman, one of the founders of Cardigan Mountain School. The 2018 Founders Prize is awarded to Matthew Ryan Hines. <laughs> the Panachi Memorial Award is awarded annually by the, uh, by the class of 1959 as a memorial to Carl J. Panachi class of 59, to that member of the senior class who, in the eyes of, the fellow, of his fellow students, has achieved the best attained ideals of honesty, integrity, leadership, and general social and spiritual adjustment. The 2018 Panachi Memorial Award goes to Cade Walker Goldberg. I almost called him Caterade, but I didn't. <laughs> Faculty Prize. A naturally gifted student with a great sense of humor, this young man always has a smile for everyone he meets. Studious, funny, and kind, he contributes to every aspect of school life. He has the ability to connect with just about everyone, anyone, and it is obvious that he cares about all of the people in his life. He is the caliber of young man we aspire to learn and live with at Cardigan. Mr. Hart says he always knows if his stewards over the years have gained the boys' respect when students come to the table with a question of, or concern and go right past Mr. Hart in order to talk directly to the head steward. This happened with this student early, very early in this year. He is a kind and thoughtful soul who treats all people with respect and goes about his many dining room duties with a consistent positive attitude. For his ever-present kindness and deep-rooted respect for every member of our community, as well as his tireless commitment to academics, this faculty prize is awarded to Ao Oliver Tian.
The, the Skibiski Memorial Award is given as a memorial to Michael R. Skibiski, to that member of the senior class who has shown the greatest progress during his Cardigan Mountain School years. The recipient of the 2018 Skibiski Memorial Award is Declan Edward Clark. Faculty Prize. This young man has distinguished himself in the nine green team as being one of its most critical thinkers. One can always count on him to thoroughly understand difficult sections of novels, in science, or in his history readings. He is extremely reliable in his preparation for assignments and always respectful of his classmates. Through his hard work and relentless attention to his assignments in all disciplines, this faculty prize is awarded to Jackson A.H. McDonald. Finally, the William Knapp Morrison Award is presented to the senior who, in the opinion of the students, best exemplifies the spirit of Willie Morrison, class of 1982, in academics, athletics, and as a campus citizen. This year's William Knapp Morrison Award goes to Colton Dean Dennis. Now please join me in welcoming Cade Goldberg, Cardigan's school leader, who will share personal reflections about his Cardigan experience. Wow. Crazy to think, two years ago, I was also graduating middle school. Looks like it just took two more years for me to finally move into high school. First off, I would like to thank the entire Cardigan community for getting me through the two years I attended here. This is the tech crew, maintenance crews around campus, the kitchen, the faculty, the administration, the days, and most importantly, my friends that I made through the two years with me. What I have come to understand is kids bond here more than other schools because we are all from different backgrounds, but Cardigan forces us to get away from our differences and get through some of the struggles we face here together. The kids I met here are what I will miss most from this place. The one faculty member who helped me the most through these two years is Mr. Gray. His wisdom and guidance has done wonders for me and for any other student who has had the opportunity to come through Cardigan under his tutelage. I want to thank him in front of all of you because he has changed me as a student, an athlete, and most importantly, as a person these last two years. He has acted as a father figure to me and many others around campus, and I am grateful for this. Many times I have been asked by the faculty and the students what I will miss most from Cardigan. Like I stated earlier, the other kids, but also something I think all ninth graders will, will miss is the last chance to be a kid and play a game of manhunt or competing down at the tennis courts or playing softball on Marion, etc. Next year at secondary school, these little things that we all remember may not be present because of the young adult mentality that we, that we will be held to next year. So this is it. We are all moving on, moving on from each other, the school. But part of us will appreciate this place, whether you realize it now or 10 years down the road or even 40 years down the road. Before departing this place, thank anyone who has had a powerful impact on your life and tell them how much they meant to you. Give them a hug and tell them that you will miss them. And for my ninth grade brothers, we made it, boys. Thank you, Kate. For your thoughtful remarks this morning and for your warm and genuine leadership of our community all year. At this time, I'd like to introduce the previously referenced faculty member, Alex Gray, who will introduce our commencement speaker this morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Holland, Mr. and Mrs. Day, trustees, parents, alumni, alumni, grandparents, and most importantly, the class of 2018. It's an honor and a privilege to introduce this morning's speaker, Master Teacher William Wim Hart. Mr. Hart is a graduate of New England College. He earned his master's degree at the Breadloaf School of English. He is an avid reader 
and wordsmith whose writing has been published in the periodicals Collector's Choice Music and Independent School Magazine. As mentioned already, Mr. Hart has dedicated the last 41 years of his life teaching English, coaching alpine skiing and tennis. He has ad advised students and presided over the procedures in the dining hall and in our biannual smelling bees. As you may have noticed in the program, he is affectionately known as the Dean of Rock and Roll. He is a founding member and bassist in the school rock band Grades and Comments. Importantly, that is one example of how he shares his passions with the students and with the faculty. In each area where Mr. Hart uh, has involved himself, he has set the rhythm and developed character and established the norms that serve as catalysts in the formation of polite young men. Indications of his influence among students include his induction as an honorary alumnus as a member of the class of 2008 and receiving the Blaze Yearbook dedication not once, but twice. His impact on faculty members is far, far reaching. The dedication of the William Wim Hart Faculty Room last June symbolizes his extraordinary service, mentoring, and friendship. In September, Mr. Hart opened the school year with a keynote address in chapel where he reminded us that it's far better to know and not need than it is to need and not know. It's fitting that his remarks will close our year. Please join me in welcoming the eponymous Mr. Hart. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Day asked me if I would be willing to give the graduating class a piece of advice. <laughs> the first was to make sure the microphone is at the best level. <laughs> One piece of advice, that's JV. I'm going to give you three pieces of advice because today, you're all varsity. The first piece of advice, get to know the people in the background. Down in the Turner Arena, we have some of the best indoor courts of any school in the Lakes region. When you return to school after the fall long weekend, they're gone. In their place is a beautiful hockey rink ready for your preseason free skates. Some of you may think the tennis court and hockey rink elves came in one night and made this magnificent, magical change. I'm sorry to tell you, you're wrong. It wasn't magic, but the hard work of the maintenance and athletic department crews that worked for hours and hours for many days, rolling up the courts, hanging them on the wall, putting in the boards and ice to get the rink ready for you. The tennis court and hockey rink elves were non-existent again when during spring vacation, the hockey rink mysteriously disappeared and in its place, you found those best indoor courts in the Lakes region. The goalposts, the soccer goals and the line fields didn't magically appear one day in the fall. These same crews worked hard again to make all the fields ready for your first practices. When you were at the salad bar and saw that and tasted all the fruits and vegetables that had been beautifully sliced and diced, that wasn't magic. When fruits and vegetables come to Cardigan, they are whole. If you split a pineapple or watermelon in half, their insides are not already sliced and diced. You may not realize it, but there are no fruit and vegetable elves in the commons either. 
the kitchen staff, day after day, week after week, and in some cases, year after year, put in countless hours of preparation so we can waltz in three times a day and have meals with more variety than you will find at other institutions. How many of us have had to shovel snow to get to breakfast after a storm? The snow shoveling elves are sleeping in when our maintenance crew are hard at work very early in the morning getting the roads, pathways, and stairs ready for us to use. I lived on campus for nine years, and I don't think I even owned a snow shovel. We are very spoiled here by all of the crews who are working behind the scenes for us. How many of these people can you call by name? These hardworking men and women do so much for you. Out of respect for their efforts, you owe it to them to know their names. There will be a time in your future when you are one of those people behind the scenes. How will you feel when someone you work for asks you to do something or just says good morning and calls you by name? I can tell you right now, you're going to feel great. My second piece of advice is what I call staying the same. By staying the same, I do not mean not maturing or changing your opinion on things. As my great hero Muhammad Ali said, a man who thinks the same way at 50 as he did at 20 has wasted 30 years of his life. What I mean by staying the same has more to do with one's personality or character. I can remember more than once when I was about your age, going with my parents to meet some friends of theirs who just happened to have a son my age. Usually it turned out that he was either two years younger, sometimes not much fun, or two years older, seldom any fun. At 14, I remember a huge difference between hanging out with someone who was 12 or 16. Now that I'm 69, hanging out with a 67 or 71-year-old doesn't bother me quite as much. <laughs> anyway, the scene would play out like this. My parents would introduce me to their friends, the Browns, and their charming son, Charlie, Charlie Brown. <laughs> we would all chat for a while, Charlie smiling and adding to the conversation comfortably. After a few minutes of chit-chatting, the hostess would say something like, Wim, what have you been doing this summer? I'd answer, well, I've been shooting a lot of arrows with my new bow, and I have just started to build a treehouse. A treehouse? How marvelous, Mrs. Brown would say. Charlie has a beautiful one in the woods. Charlie, take Wim out to see your treehouse. Sure, mother, that would be fun, Charlie would add with a smile. So off we would go, and as soon as we got an earshot of the adults, Charlie would turn into a completely different person. He would try to impress me with vulgar language and brag about all the stuff he did at his school and cool stuff he had gotten past his stupid parents at home, knowing I would never know if they were true or not. Once in the treehouse, he would go straight for the cubbyhole he had built and pull out a pack of cigarettes and matches. Who is this guy, I would say to myself. Is he the Charlie I met earlier with his parents or the one in his treehouse? It's hard to respect a person who changes his or her character, depending on the company. On the other side of the coin is John, my best friend since first grade. I still see John once or twice a year, and what I most respect about him is that he has always been the same guy. Whether playing catch at his house in fifth grade, going to places with his parents or my parents, going on skiing trips when we were in school and then at college, or out in the world for the first time on our own. And when we both got married, I always knew that when I would see him, that he would be the same genuine best friend, John. Sort of a what you see is what you get. 
Unlike the Charlie Browns of this world, John is the same person no matter where we go or what we do. He has my utmost respect for always exhibiting this important trait. Don't worry about trying to impress or be a chameleon, changing your colors depending on the situation. You're all just fine the way you are. Stay that way. The third and final piece of advice is to keep your sense of humor. Most of you read some of the stories in Lawrence Gonzalez's great book, Deep Survival. Deep Survival is a collection of stories about mountain climbers, sailors, and adventurers who all found themselves in a predicament which should have killed each of them. Miraculously, they summoned their dire situations and lived to tell their tale. As Gonzalez studied these many adventures for his book, he came up with a list of 12 actions each of the people displayed, which helped them cheat death. What is the second act on the list? Use your sense of humor. One of the more horrific stories takes place in the Peruvian Andes in 1985. Joe Simpson and Simon Yates summon a, summit a very dangerous rock face, and on their descent, Simpson falls and drives his lower leg up through his knee. Ouch. Yates tries to lower the partner down by rope harness. Simpson's broken leg banging against the rocks as he is being lowered. A big ouch. Finally, Yates gets to a point where they would both die if he did not cut the rope and let his climbing buddy fall where he may. He summoned up the courage to cut his friend free. Simpson's rope is cut and he falls into a crevasse. Miraculously, miraculously, he does no further damage to himself as he lands on soft snow and his backpack. Picture this man. He has his lower leg shoved through his knee and finds himself alone in a crevasse. What is the first thing he does? He laughs. One of the 12 things the author tells us all survivors do. And I quote him, to laugh at your own misfortune, we must be willing to play the fool. It keeps us from taking ourselves too seriously. It keeps us humble and clear-headed. Simpson, with his broken leg and clear mind, makes it out of the crevasse and limps to safety, keeping his sense of humor, which kept him alive. Another book many of you read is the magnificent collection of short stories, The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, the subject matter being his deployment during the Vietnam War. One of the favorite scenes in my classes was in the story Lives of the Dead. One of the soldiers, Ted Lavender, copes with horrible war experiences by taking tranquilizers every morning, each day becoming very mellow for Ted. Whenever one of his platoon mates would ask him how the war was going, he would just answer, mellow man, a nice mellow war today. One day while Ted is returning from the bush after relieving himself, he is shot in the head and killed by a North Vietnamese sniper. Losing their friend causes great grief for the other soldiers in his platoon. They never mention Ted being shot in the head but instead resort to a bit of humor, saying, good old Ted, he was zapped while zipping. <laughs> Long after his body has been airlifted away, from time to time, one of the men would be thinking of his lost friend, and out of the blue, just blurt out, Ted, how's the war today? And another voice would answer, mellow man, a nice, mellow war today. This short exchange put a smile on their faces. A bit of humor is what helped these men cope with all of the death around them. Like the adventurers in Deep Survival, the soldiers in O'Brien's stories find humor a very powerful 
a necessary attribute. I don't know if you will ever climb mountains in Peru, and I hope you are never a soldier fighting an invisible enemy in the jungle somewhere, but I hope if things are looking dim, your sense of humor will make, make its appearance. So there you have it, my three pieces of advice. I feel as if I need a trumpet to play a fanfare to herald in my punchline. I don't see any trumpets. There's a bagpipe somewhere, but it's not filled with air and ready to be played. Wait a second. Plan ahead, boys. Plan ahead. <laughs> Here is the punchline. When you are at great St. Grottle sex next year, <laughs> and then when you are at college somewhere, and you, when, you, when you come back to teach at Cardigan, <laughs> and when you're busy being the best dads on the planet, and then the best granddads on the planet, do three things. Get to know the people behind the scenes. Always stay the same. And what may be the most important, keep and use your sense of humor. And now it's time to present your diplomas. <laughs> with the first diploma, Jack Thomas Almeida. Juan Pedro Barroso Gonzalez. Lucas Boyd. <laughs> William Hugh Frazier Brannon. William Robert Brugier. Malcolm Alexander Gregory Bussey. Wilson Christopher Cano. Jorge Castillo Rueda. Marcus Chan. <laughs> Yu Yo Chen. Anthony Chu. Samuel 
Jia Heng Choi. Declan Edward Clark. Thomas Dana. Ellis Hamilton DeMars. <laughs> Colton Dean Dennis. Joaquin Echenique. <laughs> Hector Ignacio Flores Moya. Jing Kai Fu. <laughs> Zeki Avshar Funk. Magnus Burley Godowski. <laughs> Peter Fox Smith Gilbert. Cade Walker Goldberg. <laughs> James Robert Green. Ming Yang Gu. <laughs> Luis Hasez. Patrick Harb Rodriguez. <laughs> John Owen Hoynes.
Gary Yang Huang. Ryan Cole Huntley. Matthew Ryan Hines. Reese Mason Cole Jones. Santari Caltiva. <laughs> Tay In Kim. John Thomas Lay the Third Thaddeus C. Levitt. Junk Young Lee. <laughs> Taehoon Lee. Kobe William Lees. <laughs> Luis Legareta Campero. Jer Chung, Jason Lee. <laughs> Gavin Leonard Liu. Gavin Louis. <laughs> Jackson A. H. McDonald. Aiden John McDonald. <laughs> Christian Moore.
Tucker James Mullen. Preston Scott Nearis. <laughs> Joseph Isaac Chukwu Ebuka Nuosu. William Jeremiah O'Connor. Auden Oliver Yeager. Dongjun Jason Park. <laughs> Daniel Ramenfor. Joseph James Roberts. <laughs> Colin Xavier Rosado. Charles Augustus Ross the Fifth. <laughs> Alexander Paul Sacklad. Sebastian Sanchez Lopez. Austin N. Shine. Boaz Bo Solomon. <laughs> Thomas Keen Stull. Alan Suh. <laughs> Helming Sun.
Jackson Sterling Swango. Ryan Patrick Sweeney. <laughs> Ow Oliver Tian. Weston Turner. <laughs> Matias Uriella Toriello. Hector Manuel Villarreal Cantu. Gunnar Claude Von Hollander. Jakai Oscar Wong. Reed Warder. Aiden Patrick White. <laughs> Slater Brokaw Whitehead. Lucas Swenson Woods. <laughs> Tian Yu Yang. Timothy John Zagari. <laughs> Poor TJ always has to wait till the end, doesn't he?
Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2018. And now, uh, please stand as we prepare to sing the Cardigan Hymn, which can be found on the back of your program. reflection. As we gather here in our varied faiths, let the spirits of these faiths and this place be here with us. Let them bless these young men who close one chapter of their life's journey and begin a new chapter. Let their power and presence guide and protect them. Let their power strengthen them, empowering them with their values to go courageously out into this world in this rich world, let them go forth, being mindful of their actions and choices, being present in the moment. Let us present here as family and friends, as the Cardigan family, let our spirits join those of our faiths to send light and goodness to these young men. Let our feelings of hope and joy empower them. Let this energy these blessings strengthen the spirit of this graduating class and all present here to be as strong as our namesake, as powerful and reflective as our lake's water, and as vibrant as the trees in their foliage. For the blessings we have received, the opportunity to be here present on this day, to recognize these beacons of the future before us, and for the life we have been granted, we go out, our hearts filled with gratitude for life, its opportunities and gifts. We go to fulfill our lives' journeys, to live them to their fullest, and to show the strength of our spirit, and to spread the light of our lives and our experiences with the world. Amen.